Hi, welcome to the Atlanta Olympics. Like every other programme, we thought it would be stupid not to come from here. I mean, this week, even Ballykiss Angels coming from Atlanta. They're setting up <laughs> in the stadium uh, next door. Now, these games uh, promise to be the most uh, sponsored games in history. In fact, this year, for the very first time, the Olympic flag is being sponsored by Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> and we're awaiting the arrival of the Olympic flame which is arriving courtesy of another sponsor, DHL Couriers. It's come all the way across the Atlantic in a box. Oh, good. damaged. Great. So I'll just give that to you. Now, the um, Olympic Flame has kindly agreed to be our special guest on the programme. So I've asked her, Wayne, our athlete, to show him off to his dressing room in our Atlanta studio. Off we go. No fighting's exciting. Discover discussion Swap guns for tongue And jump for concussion And tell of your foes in one message kiss And come to the Friday night And the Olympics have some very exciting new events this year. This is the closing stages of the Pole Vault Marathon. This woman has run 26 miles with this pole and she's just about to vault. Oh and there are some very high-tech events as well. Over here are the qualifying rounds of the 300 meters scale electric race. <laughs> Now, you've probably heard they've introduced beach volleyball to make the Olympics more sexy, but another event they've introduced to boost the ratings, you can see it just over there, it's Olympic showering. <laughs> no, not everyone's happy with another three weeks of bloody sport on every channel. In fact, some of the officials here aren't looking forward to it. On your marks, get set. <laughs> So the Olympic Committee have uh, taken this into account with the introduction of a new demonstration sport, clay television shooting. Oh. <laughs> and now we leave the stadium and enter the Olympic Village. There's the Olympic Village Hall, <laughs> the Olympic Village Idiot, and the Olympic Village People. an exact replica of our British studio. Uh, in Atlanta, no one will be able to run more than 30 metres without taking a urine test. We're not going to show that urine test because Sky's bought up the rights to all of them. So instead, Wayne and I will go through into the Atlanta Stadium. Here we go. <laughs> Wayne, the athlete, carries the torch up the solemn steps where it will serve as a nice, even source of heat below our giant Olympic walk. <laughs> oh, yes, it's lovely in here. We've got the chicken, <laughs> we've got bean sprouts, we've got water chestnuts, and the great thing is they'll all be cooked in two minutes because that's the joy of stir-fry. It's all in the preparation. <laughs> Marvellous, yummy. Um, right, now, uh, unfortunate phrase, uh, but there's going to be a crackdown on drug abuse at uh, these Olympics um, after Panorama alleged that some shot putters are coming up with remarkably good throws, considering they're British. Um, <laughs> but as, as this clip from the programme shows, Panorama's evidence looks suspiciously doctored. Oh, tremendous height on that shot. My goodness gracious me. And Simpson getting better and better as this competition goes on. It's a silver, 90 metres 38, but Simpson is the champion. Uh, meanwhile, uh, back home, the post office went on strike, so the government retaliated by taking away their monopoly on mail delivery, uh, so that now 37 mail companies will compete uh, for the delivery of one letter. And uh, meanwhile, the contract may go to other services as well, those that know where you live, um, <laughs> including burglars, the fire brigade, Santa Claus, and in Devon and Dorset, the Grim Reaper. <laughs> and in the week that Charles and Diana finally went off in their separate huffs, 
Um, <laughs> has the House of Windsor lost the respect the public was once willing to give to 23 social incompetents? <laughs> well, maybe, because uh, news emerged that the royal family may have gone too far by commissioning the BBC to celebrate the Queen Mother's forthcoming 97th birthday with a special edition of How Do They Do That? <laughs> it was a triumph of research and design, and here's how it was done. Starting is tricky. The secret lies with a special handle. Whipped up by a World War II bomber engine, she can travel at 70 miles per hour in a single bind. The skull is bolted to a hydraulic platform so it can be lifted up and down. The throat has a natural lubricant which enables whole fish to slide down into the stomach. The rest was the product of computer wizardry and the all-important crash helmet for protection when jumping. Looking cute is no protection against storms and predators. She's also got to learn that the free food will soon stop and that one day pretty soon she'll have to fight to eat. The thing is that now that Diana is out of the way of the royal family, uh, the Queen has taken swift action uh, to freshen up the monarchy uh, by reshuffling the royal oh, yeah. family. <laughs> uh, Princess Margaret will be replaced as the Queen's official sister uh, by Damon Hill. <laughs> there he goes, unless he spins off, of course. Uh, Princess Anne and Prince Edward will merge to form one department called the Prince of Trade and Industry. <laughs> Uh, meanwhile, Prince Charles will gradually be phased out altogether. <laughs> right. That's right. And what that means, then, mm. is that the Queen is going to remain Queen. The succession to the throne will remain with her permanently. Mm. Uh, and so what's going to happen is when she dies, her head will be cryogenically preserved in a box <laughs> of frozen <laughs> uh, We can see that there. And uh, it will still be used to greet visiting dignitaries. Oh. <laughs> But well, of course, what a sad week. It's all over for Charles and Di. The divorce has come through. Uh, there's the bit of paper you might have seen on telly showing Monday's business in the divorce court with Charles v. Diana at the bottom of a list of ordinary folks. But of course, that's just the decree Nisi. Uh, the winners then go through to the second round. <laughs> and the final, where we predict uh, Princess Diana will meet Mr. E.A. Clifton, uh, the number two seed for the decree absolute. <laughs> Now, this divorce is going to be a nightmare. There's going to be a lot of fallouts, mm. and for a start, the palace will have to drop the publication of its family tree, because the family tree now looks like some weird botany experiment out of the X-Files. <laughs> so instead, what they're going to do, it's going to appear in this, which is Burke's saliva chains. <laughs> it's an authoritative guide to who's got off with who across a wide social strata. Uh, well, actually, one group of Dianas who didn't nurse their grief in the privacy of a crowded public park this week uh, was our Friday night armistice bus of Dianas. Um, <laughs> they thought they'd give the press a taste of its own medicine by lying in wait outside the offices of the Sun <laughs> and uh, then stalking their photographers. Uh, so let's see how they got on. There's uh, News International. There they go. One of, one of them's just shouted, show us your cleavage, there. <laughs> Very rude. Sorry. No comment. No comment. Go for them, sisters. Go on. <laughs> now, the army announced it was going to allow women soldiers to fight next to men. Uh, a reversal of recent policy where male soldiers would fight next to pubs. <laughs> Gay recruits are still excluded, though, on the basis that they cannot be relied upon to keep their mind on a molten rocket hurtling towards their face. <laughs> um, when there's a handsome sergeant next to them, <laughs> looking good when he's angry, <laughs> terrified. <laughs> um, but it is a start. So has the army changed? Is the modern army now more than just a crack team of 18-year-olds with petty theft convictions <laughs> who come to our aid when the bin men go on strike? <laughs> well, it's given us the SAS, our greatest export since apples. Um, <laughs> and they've been trained to live in the forest by skinning rabbits and Arabs. Um, <laughs> but new evidence is emerging of what the ordinary army man is still like. Next Sunday, Defence Secretary Michael Portillo will unveil a statue depicting 30 white officers leaving an army canteen because a black soldier's come in to eat. <laughs> While on Monday, the latest army recruitment ad will get its first airing on television. What are you thinking? <laughs> if it's, this looks like a nice place for a quiet drink, there's no point calling us. 
If it's... I'm gonna get those gay bastards in the corner! We want to hear from you. Army oh, soldier, be the best. I'm on the subject of guns this week, there's been a lot of talk about it, because the police have been asking for stricter curbs on gun control, yeah? Um, but the gun lobby say, you know, all this stuff, about as long as they're used within the confines of a gun club, that's OK, don't worry. And that's actually good news for Saddam Hussein, because two years ago he set up a scud club <laughs> with uh, all his missiles trained at little targets, very crude pictures of Tel Aviv on them. The UN can't touch him. <laughs> the, thing, the thing about clubs is that, that people say they're all right, mm. they're legitimate. But if you belong to a ring, then that mm. sounds more sordid. Yeah. 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 I mean, I was offered membership of a satanic ring. Mm. Not interested. Satanic club. Mm, sounds nice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Once a week, something to do. Yeah, yeah. It goes the other way as well, because, I mean, I'm a member of a book ring, mm. right? <laughs> and we get raided by the police all the time. <laughs> and all we're doing is mail ordering. <laughs> I'm in the uh, Royal Automobile ring. <laughs> Actually, the only time that ring and club thing doesn't really work mm. is with Boney M songs, because brown girl in the ring sounds fine. Mm. Brown girl in the club, no. <laughs> no, not sure. <laughs> Sorry, what's that, Mr Tony Blair? <laughs> Sorry, Mr Tony Blair. You're hungry. Hungry for pussy. <laughs> Mr Tony Blair, you are a lusty weeble. <laughs> what's that? So bog off skin face and give me some skirt. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you what, you'll be happy with the next item because it's time to play Hunt the Old Woman! <laughs> right, this is the old woman and uh, <laughs> we're still in her hunting season. Uh, <laughs> we uh, place her inside someone else's TV programme and ask you to hound her down. <laughs> and uh, the first person to uh, spot her this week was uh, Janet Phelps from Kent, and she's here tonight. <laughs> so, uh, you spotted... Where did you see her? Watchdog Health Check. Watchdog <laughs> Health Check? How could you possibly be on that? Let's have a look. <laughs> well, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> well, well done. You win um, our star prize, uh, which is, of course, a set of... Friday Night Armistice Dart Flights <laughs> and uh, some Dart Flight Beer. <laughs> we also win uh, tonight's special prize, which is one hour's free Dart Flight tuition from Eric Bristow. <laughs> Now, uh, Eric, you know about darts. Yep. Yeah? But what do you know about running courses on management training and business strategies? <laughs> Nothing. Nothing. All right. Well, by an amazing coincidence, neither do I. <laughs> However, that didn't stop us uh, devising and selling a management training course called On Target with Eric Bristow <laughs> uh, to a load of companies. Right? The course claimed you could learn a lot about teamwork from the game of darts. <laughs> and what we did was we put all the interested companies in a room and found out for ourselves just what you can do to six respectable businessmen without them walking out asking for their money back or throwing a dart at you. Here we are. On target with Eric Bristow. Well, I'm Eric Bristow and uh, darts is all about hitting the target. And uh, really, that, that's what today's all about. We all know what it's like at work. You're at work and the phone's continually ringing, uh, the photocopiers bust, all sorts of things can, can go on and they make you lose sight of the target. So the target. You lose sight of the target. <laughs> what Eric and Dave and I are here to do is perhaps try, try and uh, make you realise what your targets are and with the darts, help to look at our targets uh, in business. Module 1, engaging the competition. <laughs> Let's go on with Module 1. That's engaging the competition. So, what we're going to do, we're going to play a little game, and I'm going to give you some targets here, put them on your back, give you three darts, and you're going to throw darts at each other. So, if you want to move on to a little bit of space. In many instances in this day and age, the target's on the front, not the back. It's very difficult to actually throw one mm -hmm. whilst worrying about my back. It seemed to paralyse yeah. me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> in business, you have to watch your back. You are a target as well. That's a very important thing. 
Module two, take flight. I've got throw and aim and look. Okay. <laughs> now, in the world of darts, what order would those come in? Don't you do the first two in that order together? Don't think so. Uh, if you're looking, you're looking at the whole thing. Then you decide where you go to aim. You, oh, if you, you mean look at the dartboard mm. first? Mm. Before you... <laughs> yeah. Combination. Yeah. I, I suppose in that sense, yes. Could I have a volunteer to look aim at the If you're throwing for anything. Well, I want you to look and aim, but don't throw. OK, look and aim, but don't throw, Bernard. <laughs> Dirty rat. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> because bringing everything back to what we were saying before, you are also a target for somebody else in business, and you are also, in a way, a dartboard. Module three. Changing the rules of darts. Can you get me treble 19? Um, there it is, yes, right. Bullo! <laughs> I put you off there. Oh, right, yes. <laughs> in, in sport, that would be called cheating. But in business, sometimes changing the rules is the only way for us to, to succeed. Let's try something else. Is it up? So you've got no chance whatsoever. <laughs> what we need to do, we need to get the dart into this target. So how can we guarantee hitting the bullseye, but the dart has to stay here? How can we guarantee hitting the target? Anybody? Move the board. Move the, target. Move the board. Exactly. <laughs> That's the solution. What I'd like is, is four volunteers. Yeah. In a line, because you're all going. What are you going to do? Right, you're all going to throw the dart at the same time. We're going to, again, change the rules slightly. And because we're going to work in a team, we're going to use something different. And I think Eric's got something for us that we can use here. Here it is. If we can, uh, yeah. we could all sort of two on one side and two on the other, maybe. If that's the way to do it. Left foot first. Yeah. <laughs> Bullseye. <Okay. laughs> so, in conclusion, here's our five-point plan for success. Develop your skills. Be aware of the competition. Realise your goals. Take off. Succeed. Spells. Darts. <laughs> now, uh, the Tories say that uh, £5 billion worth mm. of spending cuts are necessary uh, to finance tax cuts. However, they are a bit worried that tax cuts will look a, a little bit vulgar. Um, so what they're going to do is they're going to give them to us, but secretly. <laughs> um, they're going to bury the cuts in a park. Huh? <laughs> and then hide little clues around the country. <laughs> but, uh, these are uh, tax cuts and the fear that they might seem a bit vulgar. They're not actually going to call them tax cuts this time because they think, you know, mm. people won't fall for them. Surely not this mm. time. No. Uh, but, so <laughs> so uh, what they're going to do, what they're going to do, they're going to disguise what they're doing and they're going to call them bribes. <laughs> ah, clever. People won't be fooled by that. No. Won't be fooled. But um, they, they've had another very good idea to uh, win votes. Instead of tax cuts, right, they're not tax cuts, but they're going to give away a free 5p with every pound. <laughs> <laughs> the problem with the Tories, though, is that they've been in government for, like, 17 years, and mm. after 17 years in a relationship, things go a bit stale, don't they? I mean, we all know that. I mean, in the first few years, it's electric, you stay up all night making policies, it's just policies, policies, <laughs> and then you, you can't keep your hands off their legislation, mm. but then, you know, you start to cool off, you run out of ideas, you find yourself looking at other countries and wondering what it would be like to run them. <laughs> <laughs> But it happens, it? <laughs> uh, for a long time, uh, the Tories had run out of policies until this week, uh, when this leaked document uh, revealed that they had thousands of mad ones on the way, <laughs> uh, like privatising roads and selling off gravity. <laughs> uh, now, Kenneth Clark, I don't know, you saw this phrase in the newspapers, Kenneth Clark actually said that these were just made up by kids in the office. That's his phrase. Uh, so who exactly are these kids and how do they go about coming up with new Tory policies? Ooh. Let's go to the Tory policy unit and let's have a look. Ooh. So here's the Tory policy unit. Uh, there's the kids. These youths are playing spin the bottle or as they call it policy or death. <laughs> <laughs> Terry, Daniel and Emma, they're playing oh, Russian no. policy. One in six policies is electoral suicide, but they still have to do it. Uh, oh, and, uh, and look, Daniel's drawn the suicidal policy. Uh, let's have a look what it is. It's banned football. He's got to do it. He's got to do it.
because uh, over here is the real right. powerhouse behind all the best fresh Tory ideas. It's this newly redesigned <laughs> Conservative <laughs> policy think tank. And uh, basically, it's uh, five revolving drums uh, <laughs> covered in the Conservative Party's most popular words. So we've got press, <laughs> uh, clean up, deregulated, all that sort of thing, copy, suck, that kind of thing. <laughs> and uh, from this drum, this series of drums, we can form policies at random. So let's give it a go. This is absolutely genuine. Okay, right. I'm going okay. gonna, gonna to close my eyes and uh, see if I can spew out a quick policy. Uh, right, Peter, uh, spin the drum for me, number one, and stop. Okay, the Prime Minister. Right. <laughs> number two, and stop. Will probably. <laughs> number three, stop. Reduce. It's looking good. <laughs> number four, stop. Dale Winton. <laughs> God. Interesting. Here we go. Uh, it could be anything. Number five. <laughs> and stop. Beef Christ. Yeah. 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 A policy. Yeah. Well, a policy. Yeah. Policy. Yeah. policy. Yeah. policy. Yeah. It's gone on the board. There it is. It's going to go into the manifesto. <laughs> I mean, they've got my vote so far, anyway. So. <laughs> just time for one more. And just to show you that we're not cheating, right? This time, we're going to let you, the public, decide Tory policy, all right? So just shout out. When you want each one of the drum of ideas to stop. <laughs> okay, here we go. Okay, shout out. Stop! Virginia, Virginia Butterfly. Stop! Will! Stop! Reduce! Stop! Butchers, butchers, go! Stop! Drunk King Go! Hey! Hey! Uh, I'm, for one, I'm looking forward to Virginia Bottomley uh, reducing Butchers Butchers Galley's drug kingdom uh, because it's something I've lobbied my MP for for years. <laughs> so, uh, thank you very much. Uh, well, I'll tell you what, the last show, shall we do one more security camera? Yeah. 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 All right. All right, and just for a change, someone else can decide who we'll look at. And how about Mr Tony Blair? Ooh. All right. Yeah. That... Wallace and Gromit. What? <laughs> You want me to get security camera footage of a tiny fictional clay man and his dog? <laughs> okay, Nelson Gromit, it is, fair enough. Okay, uh, let's just call them up on, on the way. camera. There, we are. there they are, that lovely, sweet clay lady oh, there. Master. Now, this is the bit we've all seen uh, every day on uh, Christmas Day, Boxing Day, and everything like that. And she says goodbye to Chocolate. Wallace. <laughs> he invites her in for cheese, offers Wensleydale. Ah, oh, oh. look, sad. He's going inside, but where's Gromit? There he is! Look! I think we should see that again yes. in slow motion, shouldn't I we? Can't <laughs> okay. It. okay, in slow motion. Yeah, oh, let's have go. another look. Slow motion, watch. Oh, the oh, oh, look at that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> look at his face. Oh. It took three weeks to animate that turd. <laughs> <laughs> now watch, he comes on in slow motion. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> Even seen that, it's still charming, isn't it? <laughs> still watch on Bank Holiday. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, we've come to the end of the series, and as I hope we've shown you over the last six weeks, the world is a dark and miserable place. But over the last few years, a beacon of hope has emerged. One man has risen up and offered the world a different way. But can this man feed the poor, heal the sick, end wars, and save the planet? Across the world, millions of people believe he can. Persuaded only by his Christ-like humility, multi-billion bound marketing machine, and some great music videos. <laughs> Possibly the richest messiah in history. He is Michael Jackson. <laughs> Michael Jackson. A man who astounded us by ascending heavenwards in glowing white robes, with only the aid of wiring and powerful lighting effects, <laughs> and a crane. <laughs> So, is Michael Jackson the only religion we have left to look forward to? And if so, what would this religion be like? Well, somewhere in a church in Britain, a church with a 20-foot-high statue of the King of Pop on the altar, <laughs> a congregation full to bursting were eager to find out. Welcome, welcome, ye flock of Michael. <laughs> and this is the first showing of the cartoon series of the Jackson 5 on American television. <laughs> Praise you, Michael! <laughs> we are 
fortunate here to be surrounded by these beautiful tableaus showing us scenes from the life of Michael. Here we see Michael standing up against the press. Whilst over here, Michael signs the biggest record contract in music history. Woo! And there we witness the expulsion of Latoya. <laughs> and now I want you to join me as we sing hymn number 57. Beat it. <laughs> here in front of this wonderful crib made by local school children depicting the agony of Michael Jackson at this year's Brit Awards. <laughs> and well done, kids. You've really managed to capture the terror of the little children as they are savagely attacked by the evil Jarvis Cocker. <laughs> Look, I'd like to confess that I once thought that Michael's latest two albums weren't as good as the others. I've heard what you said, my child and you must cut off your ears. <laughs> Anyone else? Yes, me. It's my dog. It's been possessed by the spirit of Jarvis Cocker. <laughs> it's evil. It must be destroyed. Help it me. must be put down. <laughs> Let us pray. O oh, King of Pop, we pray for everyone worldwide who has been or who shall be punched in the face by your minders. <laughs> that they may understand that though you love them, this must be balanced by the need for strict security. Ow! Ow! With that in mind, let us now pray for all Jacksons, beginning with Michael Jacksons. <laughs> we pray for Michael Jackson, the controller of BBC Two, <laughs> Michael Jackson, the SAC chairman of the Woolwich Building Society, and Michael Jackson, president of the Campaign for Real Ale. We pray for Colin Jackson, the hurdler, American troublemaker Jesse Jackson, Gordon Jackson from The Professionals, Jackson Brown, Jackson Pollock, the cast of the American cop film Action Jackson, and Caroline Jackson, conservative Euro MP for Wiltshire North and Bath. Thus are named all Jacksons. Ow! Ow! Now, let us all be upstanding on our dancing feet as we say... Let the sun shine out of Michael Jackson, King of Pop. King of Pop! <laughs> Don't lock the porch door because last week I had to sleep in the shed. Good night. Yeah.